Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna talk about a brand new feature in Autotask, and that is Kanban boards. These recently came out in the 2022.2 .2 release, so if that is of interest to you, then this video is for you. Hey everyone, Chris Tim here. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm going to talk about Kanban boards. This is a brand new feature that just came out in Autotask recently. I'm going to go through in this video everything you need to know about Kanban boards, how to set them up, when to use them, what about security, all of that kind of stuff. So let's take a look and see how this works. So what we're going to do in here, the very, very first thing you need to do is make sure that you come into the security levels. So let's go and take a look at the, the new option that's inside the security level. So we go to account settings and users, and then we go into security levels. <coughs> and if we pick in this particular instance, let's just go ahead and pick the, um, the Sondela system administrator actually. And then what we wanna do is come into here and go all the way down to um, where it says service desk, and then right underneath the service desk, you will see that there are board permissions in here. So the very first thing you wanna do is to can edit, edit and add boards and can edit tickets by moving cards on the board. Um, and then we simply wanna go ahead and save and close this. What we then wanna do is just make sure that our security levels have the correct, uh, the, the correct permissions and the correct security. So let's go in here and take a look. So we can see that I currently have the system administrator system. So all I'm gonna do here, is I'm just gonna change my security level at this point so, um, so that I have the Sondela system administration. I think it was Sondela system administration. Right, so once I've got that done, I then have the ability to actually look at Kanban boards, edit them, uh, you know, you know, change any of the Kanban boards or move the cards around, all of that kind of stuff. So in order to access the Kanban boards, the first thing you have to do is access them um, from behind one of these, um, these dashboards. So let's just go in at this point to, um, you know, in this particular case, yeah, let's just go into the service technician dashboard. And here you can see, you know, we have seven tickets in total. So when I click on this, you can see we now have a button up here called board view. So what this is gonna do is allow me to now choose which board I want to use to display these tickets. So currently there are a bunch of boards already built onto the system, but what I'm gonna do in here is to change this to um, you know, primary resource and status. So when I select that, it brings up the Kanban board allowing me to make these changes. So you can see the columns in here are um, you know, the resource. So we've got Chris Tim in here, and we've got some tickets where um, the resource is none. And then we've got all of these different statuses as well. So we've got awaiting customer, in progress, new, that kind of stuff. So very, very simple in its simplest form. All I need to do is if I wanted to move one of these from the new to in progress status, I simply drag the card into the in progress status. Um, what this will give me the ability to do, right down at the bottom, you can now see it's changed my status automatically to be um, in progress. Now here I can see on deck. So the on deck is giving me um, something that is, um, is completely different. So these are, are not filtered to show uh, necessarily any of the information in here. Like it's not filtered by, um, you know, showing me a, um, a, a status and it's also not showing me where they're assigned to, to anything. So I can simply just drag this in if I wanted to. So if I take this scheduled and I drag it into here, you'll see that what will basically happen is all of a sudden my ticket now has um, changed to in progress. So if I had other engineers in here, I would simply be able to drag this in. Um, or in this case, if I wanted to unassign this ticket from myself, I can simply drag it out of here, drag it into the none, and the resource now has been unassigned against this board. So very simple, very straightforward way of being able to control and run the Kanban boards. 
So one of the things we can do at this point is we can use this little button over here to actually bring this Kanban board out in a separate tab, in a separate window, whatever the case might be. And then we can just run this so we can go ahead and you know close down this, this um, tab in order task. And now we have our Kanban board running as a specific tab or a pop out or whatever you wanna do so you can run that somewhere else on your machine or a different screen. So you always have access to be able to use these Kanban boards. So let's go and take a look at how this is set up. So if we edit the board in here, we can see we're looking at primary resource and status, um, and we're basing the columns on primary resource, which we can see by going back into here, this is who our primary resource is uh, on any of these. We can also see that we're displaying columns just for values in the data set. Now the reason it's not showing um, you know, other resources or why it's not showing um, some of this other information is because we have told it in this particular instance to only show where there are some values in the data set. What I normally like to do in here is I go just show all values, right? And when I save and close this, and then I come back into here and I refresh this, you will now see that this Kanban board will now show me every single resource, even though they don't have any data in them. So this is the really cool thing about this. So now I can display my resources in here um, and those resources do not have any, um, any tickets. So you can see I'm still displaying them. Um, now what I can do is simply take this ticket and give it over to Michael Brown and it stays in the in progress, but now the ticket is assigned to him. So very quick and easy way of being able to edit these to show all columns or to show in this particular instance, you can also go show all values in the data set but you know, I don't want to see anything that is equal to a particular resource. So I don't wanna see Cindy Jones, All right? So I can simply click on save and close. Um, and what that will do now is that will just not display Cindy Jones in, in this list. So if I scroll all the way across to the end, oh, sorry, I, I, I made it show only Cindy Jones, which is why we're now seeing none and, and Cindy Jones, but I can come back here and I can change this to say, um, you know, show show everybody um you know where where they are equal to or not equal to um to cindy jones for that case so the none column this is showing for cards that do not have a value so i can say you know only display if there's nothing so in that column that we saw earlier on where we're displaying the none column in here we only want to display this column if it actually has something in it so if i just do this now what you'll simply see is we now have Cindy Jones and myself, but now we do not no longer have that, that none column. So the really cool thing about this, it gives you the ability to customize how you want these columns to look. It also gives you the ability to choose whether you're actually displaying data in a field um, or not, as the case might be. So one of the things um, you can now do at this point is if we go back into here and we have a look at, that's what we're looking at on our columns and our rows, and then we can choose what happens on the on deck uh, system. So in here, we were now saying on the deck system, we wanted to show where the status is not equal to complete, so all open tickets, but only those tickets that are in the triage queue. So if we go back into here, we can see that these tickets are in the triage queue, and even though this is now marked as in progress, um, we, we are only seeing it, there's no, there's no resource assigned to these, um, but also it's showing it as in progress, so I can just move this to Cindy. This will now um, change this ticket. You can see it stays in, um, in the on deck because it's still within that same queue, um, but now we can see that it's assigned to, to Cindy. So really, really gives us the ability to change how we want this board to look and feel. Of course, we can completely get rid of the on deck section um, and, and not have that section display at all on these. Okay, so what do we need to do now if we wanted to set these up ourselves? So before we do that, you can see in here, you have the ability to, to look at anything. So that was looking at, you know, primary resource and status. Um, you know, maybe we wanna look at Q. So let's actually do that. Let's say I only wanna see tickets that are um, assigned to resources that are in a particular queue. So how would we go and do that? So the, the, the easiest way to do this is to come back into order task, go into, uh, features and settings, and then from features and settings under service desk, and then here you have the option of boards. Now all of this stuff that I was showing you in here, 
If you remember right in the beginning of the video, I went into the admin section and I ticked those two boxes. And this is what those boxes allow you to do. Well, well, this is one of them. It allows you to obviously come in here and make any changes to this board. But the other thing it allows you to do is to drag and drop these tickets. So being able to click on them and drag and drop them. So if you get to a point where you click on this and you don't see the little hand icon and you can't drag and drop stuff, then that means typically that you, um, you, know, you haven't enabled those, um, those permissions. So here is where we can have the board. So let's go and have a look at this. What we wanted to do is we wanted to do by primary re resource and queue. And then what we can do is to say, all right, what we wanna do is to display the columns based on, so let's base this on, um, on the queue. We only wanna show where there are values in the data set, so we don't wanna show any queues that don't have any tickets in them. Um, let's not show, yeah, let's only show none if needed. Um, and let's display column totals, and I'll go through this in, um, in, in a couple of minutes, and I'll go through explaining what the, the, the column counts mean. So we're gonna do, columns are gonna show the queues, and then the rows we want to show um, as the primary resource. So again, we're gonna do the same. We're only gonna show the values in the data set. We're not gonna display the none row. Um, and we are, um, actually let's not display the column totals in, in any of these. And in this particular instance, we're not going to have an on deck section. So there you go, we now have primary resource and queue. So if we come back into our boards section, uh, sorry, if we actually go back into uh, back into the board here, what we can now do is, um, if I just refresh these, what you'll see at this point is we now have the ability to have this primary resource and queue. So now we can see, um, you know, we are displaying none, and that's because there are tickets in um, in that particular state. But there you go. There's a primary resource. Um, and, and here's some um, some tickets in those particular queues. Right, so we can say, well, this is in the client portal queue. Again, I wanna make sure that this gets moved over to, um, to the support queue. I can simply do that. The status stays the same um, because all we're doing at this point on the view is we are, are putting this into the particular view that, um, that, that it needs to be in. So this chain, all we're doing is we're changing the queue from client portal to support. You can see here in, in brackets or parentheses, whichever country you're in, um, you can see this little number in here. So this is obviously showing how many tickets there are in that queue. It will also show from the primary resource, you know, how, how many tickets are um, assigned to them. And that was done on those tick boxes that we selected in here. I'm gonna show card um, counts in rows and I'm gonna show card counts in column. And when I do this, and I go back into here, you should see against my name, I have five tickets assigned to me in total. So you can choose whether you actually have this information displayed. Um, obviously it's entirely up to you how you build and set up these Kanban boards. Now, one of the things um, at this point that you can do as well, you can see there's a bunch of check boxes up here. So what I can do with this is if I said, okay, you know, these two tickets that are in the support queue, I, I, I still wanna use, um, you know, the forward modify that, that I can use on any other ticket. So I can either come in here and do the forward modify or add my time or do whatever I need to do on a ticket by ticket basis. But if I wanted to forward both of these two back into the client portal queue, instead of me dragging them into here, I could still, if I really wanted to, bulk change or bulk update these tickets. Um, uh, I wouldn't drag them into a queue at this point because this is looking at you know dragging them from the support queue. But one thing I haven't got on here is maybe I want to assign these two, these two particular tickets to a different resource. So I have another resource showing up in there. So if I forward modify this, and I change the primary resource on this to be Matthew Smith. What you will now see when I go into here um, and I just refresh this. So you can now see that actually they've gone from me and we're not displaying Matthew Smith in here, but we can simply go back in and we can say, you know, let's look at all, oops, that's the cues. Uh, let's look at all values in there and let's look at all values in there. 
And when we save and close this, and we refresh, you'll now see we have all of um, the resources. Oh, I probably didn't actually put them into Matthew Smith because they don't actually appear in his card. I mean, I can simply drag it to his card um, and, and we'll now see that these appear within his card. So very, very simple, very straightforward way of being able to completely customize um, the, the, the Kanban boards. Of course, we can go back to the grid view here. So from at this point, you can come back in and you can go into the grid view. Now, one of the things you might notice is when I click on it, um, you know, on the actual widget itself. So to, to access that, I clicked here under the, um, the, the tickets for non-recurring. Um, I'm clicking on these two tickets. Now, what I can actually do is when I click on these and then I go into board view, it's going to ask me which board I want to use against this view. So I have to now go ahead and pick a particular board. What I can do though, however, is, um, now this isn't gonna allow me to refresh this. Let's just actually go in and add a system tab and let's add service technician and just do the same thing. So from here, what we can now do is if we click on the settings, this gives us the ability now, once the settings open up, to choose what our default board is going to be when we click on that widget. So I can say, you know, my default board is going to be primary resource in queue. And now when I click on something within that widget and I go into board view, it takes me straight into that board and allows me to go in without having to pick that stuff manually. So I hope that's helped. If this video has been useful, I would really appreciate it if you can support me, uh, you know, hit the like and subscribe button below, um, you know, buy, buy me a coffee. It really does help me to, to make more videos like this. Um, and I would really, really appreciate if you would just, you know, give it a like and subscribe and let me know if there's any other kinds of videos that you'd like me to do. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.